everyone, 3 Hero here, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video for this week's content. I hope everything's going well on your end, as today's build will be focusing on an explosive Solar Splash build, via War My Cells once again. Quite an interesting build we have to show, as this one here will allow you to produce War My Cells via Solar Splash damage, which can be procced through a number of ways, and can allow you to create some unique loadouts for ad clearing fun. Like the majority of my builds, this one is very easy to put on and can be flexible for all three classes, not just a titan. But in this case here, I wanted to show you what would happen when you combine a explosive machine gun, plus acting Warvix and War Mine Cells in one singular bundle. If you're thinking what I'm thinking, then yes, you will get a Destiny version of the Torque Guns and Profanity spewing themes from Borderlands, but with even more explosions. Sounds interesting? It should be, as this would tickle a number of things you may be looking for. So let's start off with the subclass, which in this case here will be the code of the Siege Breaker for its continuous solar flames that can be produced via its abilities or super. Now for this section here, you can choose the other solar subclasses as well for proccing the war mine cells, but I find that the other two subclasses are only really good for the more aggressive burst moments, where the damage isn't really stacking up but just being used in one full burst to devastate the area, while you wait to fully reuse your abilities or super again, aka Code of the Fire Forge and Code of the Devastator supers. With that being the case, I found that the Code of the Siege Breaker offers more on the table, as while you create solar spots, these can as well create war mine cells as you go, as they are considered solar splash damage, which means as long as you kill a target with the solar spot active, basically means you have a very high chance of reducing cells all the time. Now with that, if you add in the ability to use Mortar Blast to release a solar explosion onto others via melee, and then use these sunspots created to make further use of Soul Invictus and Soul Warrior as well, and well, the rest is history. You just need to make sure you have a well grouped up area of mobs to do this in, so you can get the full effect going. For your grenades, Thermite and Incendiary grenades are your best choice of picking in terms of activating your solar spots, and also passively creating War Mine Cells on the phone. I found that the Thermite Grenade is the best for this, for its long overall duration and damage, and will be able to allow you to proc it more often. For the weapons, the two main ones you want to have is the Marty's Retribution Grenade Launcher and Xenophage for their inert solar splash damage. The Marty's Retribution was a last season weapon which was a fan favour to the majority of the community, as it was a new grenade launcher frame type, which offered the same effect that Thermite Grenades have, however its duration only lasted a few seconds. Nonetheless, the grenade launcher proved popular with a number of builds it incorporated in, and some of the parts you can roll on made it even more worthwhile in terms of investing it. From testing, I found that the grenade launcher, upon being fired and killing enemies, can create a war mine cell, which means you can have this and the thermite grenade launcher both picked together to lock down multiple areas and cause even more chaos than imagined. Plus, with the ability to roll demolitionists into it, meant you can keep the two wombo combo going as long as you had ammo. This is one of the reasons why I've chosen this weapon for its full effect. For the more aggressive side of things, the Xenophage offers the ability to produce cells as well with its explosive rounds, and I have to be honest with you guys, you really need to try this weapon out, as it's an absolute DPS monster that not enough people give credit to, and when combined with the Acton Warwicks for continuous firepower, you really do get a torque centric weapon, like everything about this weapon feels amazing. Like, it's, this weapon feels like it's meant to be in Borderlands, it does not feel like it's meant to be in Destiny. This weapon here 100% feels amazing, from design, animation, and pure firepower. And it's only now, because I've actually got my butt up and decided to actually go farm for it, it's only now I've noticed how amazingly powerful it is. Which is why I recommend you actually go ahead and go get it. And then lastly, your primary is simply left up to you, as having the Xenophage and Martis or a weapon with Firefly built into it is really everything you need to get the party started. If you want to fully follow my build down to the T and want to make use of the Acton Warvigs, then having something like the Steel Feather Repeater AR with Warpool if you have one, Breakneck or Ether Doctor is a wise choice to pick for their sheer firepower and fire rate alone and can do wonders when paired with this specific exotic. I would actually say having the Aether Doctor which is easy to attain is probably the best to pick for anyone when using this build, as it has a decent sized magazine of around 40 plus, and can also roll with these standard damage perks that everyone generally goes after. 
You also have to remember it's a 600 RPM AR, which did receive a buff which makes it a top contender to use in both PvE and PvP. And with 600 RPM weapons like the Galar 42 making its claim in current content, 600 RPMs in general are becoming the dominant weapon to pick for both contents. Now moving on the stats, you may see that I have a 17 resilience for the build, where you're probably questioning yourself as to why am I going that high? Well, to be quite honest with you, the only reason being that is, well, fashion really, as the arms, which are the ones with the high resilience stat, fits perfectly for the build and gives my titan a very nice overall look. Like I mentioned before, the resilience stat should only go to 50, maybe 60 if you have a few points left over, as this stat at 50 is more than enough to tank whatever is thrown at you. At 60 and more, it kind of goes to waste unless you're focusing on a barricade focused build, which can have some pros and cons to it. Our recovery for example is in the 50s, which is also an ideal spot to aim for, but in this case here, can be increased for further as more recovery will equal faster uptime for getting back in the action. And the same for discipline stat as well, which is at 50, where the more we have, the faster we can regain grenades. But if you have a weapon that has the demolition perk, then that shouldn't really be an issue. And at that point there, you can honestly just keep it at 50, as 50 and demolition perk is well enough for you to regain grenades within a few seconds. If you plan to use your melee now, then look into from that startup as high as possible to the resident level so that your subclass perks can make full use of them as well. But if not, then like I said, allocate them in the areas that you think is best. For armor, you will need to have either a season 9 or season 10 armor piece to slot in the warmind mods that we are aiming for. They will need to be solar as that's what the mods correspond with, so the three of them in total is all you need. I do have a Arc Titan Mark to make use of the Storm of Lead mod, but if you don't have it, it's not really that much of a problem as you only need to have Global Reach mod available on your gear, so really, it kind of frees up a space for you to fit in whatever you want. As sort of quiet, I'm going for the Acton War Rigs to aid my Xenophage for further maximum destruction, and all my cells procking ability, without the need to slow down and reload, and then have paired it with my AR of choice for specific DPS purposes if I'm out of ammo for my heavy or secondary. This combo overall basically makes it pretty lethal when focusing primarily on bosses, as your damage uptime is increased per every time you're meant to reload, so it's a win-win in my books, and definitely something that a lot of players should look into retrying again, especially when you're using it in something like Gambit or the Raids or Strikes, something where you'll be focusing entirely on bosses. Now with that explained, here are the necessary mods you need to have. Head, Recovery and Wrath of Rasputin mod, Arm, Discipline and Rage of the Warmind mod, Chest, a Large Armor Reserves and Machine Gun Reserves mod, Leg, Recovery and Burning Cells mod, Mark, Concussive Dampener, Distribution, Storm of Lead and Global Reach mod. So as the build focuses on the solar splash damage for Warmind Cells effect, it's best I explain what is considered that so you have a better idea when building off on it, in case you don't have the things that I have. A prime example is Sunshot or Ace of Spades with their built in Firefly perk. Once you land a precision final blow on a target, a solar blast will erupt from them that can either kill or weaken others around them. The explosion that kills the target but also kills others around it is what is considered a solar splash damage and that is where the Wrath of Rasputin mod kicks in for its effect. So to give you an idea, Firefly, Solar Grenade, Solar Supers that produce Solar Splash, Xenophades, Marty's Retribution, 1000 Voices, Chromatic Fire with a Solar Subclass, etc. Anything with a Solar Explosion that produces Solar Splash damage will be able to proc it, except for Polaris Lance Perfect Fifth Perk, which is apparently bugged at this current moment. Now onto the build itself, you can see how everything comes together to create a warm mind cells one after another solar centric build. With my grenades, secondary and heavy, every time I get a kill with them after X amount of kills, I'll produce a cell which I can detonate and cause a wide clear out of the area. With this happening, there's a chance for the explosion to create another warm mind cells thanks to the rate of the warm mind cell mod which applies solar damage to those affected once a cell is destroyed. So in theory, you can create a chain of reaction in a very clustered area, to where basically wherever enemy goes, a warm mind cell will be there waiting for them. And the moment you destroy it, another one by chance should be able to pop up to where you can go ahead and destroy it. And from there, it's 
basically 50-50 as to whether you'll get another one, or whether you have to create another one via your weapons, or abilities. Now, add on the global leak for more damage and range, and burn the cells mod for solar tick damage to be applied, and well, you're going to be able to clear out looms in probably one of the most sorciest ways possible. All that combined will allow you to achieve utter peace in the most hectic of situations, and if you're a fan of the menagerie or specifically Gambit, and you want to wipe out mobs as quickly as possible to speed through content, then this build here will give you all that plus more, since it's literally a nuke you're placing and detonating per chance you get. To be honest, a lot of the builds I do from here on out will be very powerful for Gambit because of how clustered mobs are in general. As you can see from gameplay, just a singular cell wipes out an area, so you may want to consider using these type of builds more often in Gambit, to speed through them if you want to get to the boss phase as quickly as possible, and generally get it done over with while also burning through your bounties. Great way if you're trying to rank up as quickly as possible. With its amazing spread and damage, all you have to do now at this point is choose the weapon you want to best activate the mod ability for, and go from there. Me personally, I found using the Xenophase with as much heavy ammo reserves as possible is the best method to stick by, as you're literally firing explosive rounds at full auto at your targets, who may get evaporated in the process but why should we care when you become the AC-130 on ground? But of course the downsides to the build, which really isn't a lot or anything serious, nothing you have to be worried about. The one thing you have to be aware of is the one myself have a hidden cooldown built into them, which is around 7 seconds, so that you can't go ahead and spam one myself one after another all the time. Now it's nothing too serious, you still can spam one myself, just not so quickly, which like I said, not a big problem. Secondly, if you choose to use Xenophage and Margie's loadout like I have, make sure you balance out which one you're going to use at times as you can run out of ammo incredibly quickly, where for example, if I'm using the Marty's to primarily proc cells, you will run out of ammo quickly as you have to land your angles first and hope that the mob doesn't actually sidestep it and just a bunch of other stuff you have to be worried about. Now of course, to counter this, slap on some ammo finder mods if it becomes too much for you and then all basically just switch your weapons and really you're all good from there. And lastly, you can use this in audio nightfalls, but you will be kind of limited in terms of what weapon is best to bring as you need to remember to bring the specific anti barrier mods to counter the champions you face, so using Marty for example may end up being a no-go as it won't do no good against a standard champion. But switch out for weapon with Firefly and can take an anti-champion mod and you may be able to go toe to toe against whatever champion you're against, as long as you survive it of course. But yeah, that's everything you need to know about the setup, which hopefully will allow you to get really creative in the long run, and honestly, Gambit is going to be a top testing ground for these builds, as that's when you can see the full effect blossom. So like always, if you enjoyed the video, then please by all means leave a like and a sub. Also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.